Oh guys, bad news. My tractor died when I was out here the other day. So today, let me see if I can't get it running again. So what's up guys, welcome back to Diesel Creek. If you're new here, my name is Matt. This is my International 454 utility tractor. And uh, I was using it the other day and I was looking for something over in the weeds there and I heard it miss a little bit, which it's never done before. And then all of a sudden it just slowly blah, 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 died out. So I'm thinking it's a fuel issue. It sounded like it was starving for fuel, but the tank was still half full and I've never had any issues with it before. So I did notice before I started it the other day, there was a little bit of fuel around, uh, around the lift pump on the side here. So I'm thinking maybe the diaphragm went out of the lift pump and it quit pushing fuel up to the, uh, the primary pump, the injector pump. So let's check that out. Give you guys a quick walk around of the tractor first before we dive into it i think it's a mid 70s model i don't know i picked it up maybe six seven years ago really haven't used it a whole lot but what little i have used it it's been very dependable this is the first issue it's ever given me uh it's very nice to have comes in handy quite often for little odds and ends here so if you don't know, diesel fuel systems have to be completely sealed and airtight, otherwise they will not run. So this line here comes from the tank, runs into this pump here, and there's a push rod that runs inside the uh, cover of the engine here, and looks like the camshaft probably turns that. Looks like the camshaft actuates this lift pump, which puts pressure down, pressurized fuel down here into the filter housing. There's a water separator here. A filter element and then it goes back up this line on the other side and runs around the side of the engine over there this line comes in from the other side of the engine over here to another filter housing and this is where things kind of get hairy for me but I'm pretty sure I know what's going on here so it goes through the filter and then you have your high pressure or the highest pressure this is not high pressure at this point yet it's I guess low pressure and then it runs into the injection pump I believe this is a vein type of pump and then I believe this is an excess fuel overflow here that runs back into the filter housing not sure about that not hundred percent and then it goes also up here there's a T that comes out of this filter and I think this side of the T here if you can see that where my fingers at that side of the line runs back to tank so that's a return to tank so excess fuel gets pushed back into the tank and this upper line is the return off the injectors. So your fuel goes up to your injectors and what excess there is comes back in a return and also goes back to tank. I'm 99% sure that's the way this works, but I haven't seen a setup quite like this before. Anyways, just to finish out the fuel system in case you don't know how the rest goes. So as I'm pretty sure this is, this is your high pressure line coming out of the filter into the vein pump. The vein pump puts out your high pressure, the true high pressure, to the injectors. This is a three cylinder diesel, so you got three injector lines run up here, up under the hood there to the injectors, and then I believe this is a return line off of the vein pump back to the filter, as I said. So as a lot of you guys that watch my channel regularly will know, this tractor has been hard to start actually since before I've even started my channel. Since I got this tractor, it's gotten progressively harder and harder to start. So what I think it is was a fuel issue. I think it was losing its prime somehow. And I think our culprit is gonna be this lift pump. So the easiest way for us to tell right now if this lift pump is any good is to crack the bleeder loose on this filter here and push this pump a hundred times and see if it's pushing fuel out of the bleeder. If it is, the lift pump's good. But if we push this lever and nothing comes out of the filter, then this lift pump is no longer lifting. So we'll pull that off of there and go get us a new one. All right, so we got the old adjustable nut rounder here. Crack this bleeder loose. So I should have mentioned too the other day when this thing died on me, I made sure it had fuel and I did try to restart it and it would not restart. All right, so we've got fuel there coming out of the bleeder. That's a good sign. Let 
it sounds like it's pushing air, not fuel, which intrigues me. <laughs> so with a full tank, I, I topped off the fuel. With a full tank, this thing should just gravity flow out to this pump. So I'm going to take this fitting off here from the tank and see if we're getting fuel up to this pump. Maybe something just clogged the old... Uh... Oh yeah. Yeah, she's got plenty of fuel. I was thinking maybe something just clogged the line on the tank. That was not very tight at all. Interesting. So after playing with it here and pumping it a bunch of times and not really putting out much fuel, I'm thinking it is probably our lift pump. You can see when I open it all the way, it does put out a little bit of fuel, but there's a lot of air in it. It's not cleaning up and turning to straight fuel like it should. And when I, I'm bit not even finger tightening this bolt, I mean just running it to where it should push out the air and then turn to fuel, it's not pushing out anything. So I'm pretty certain that the lift pump's going. But what I'm gonna do is close that bleeder now and move to the opposite side of the tractor on that other fuel filter and we'll take the bleeder loose there and crank it and see if we get fuel pressure over there. Let's crank it and see if we get more fuel coming out of that thing. Nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and conclusively say that our lift pump is no good. So we'll go ahead and pull that lift pump off now and then uh, run to town and see if they have one at the Napa. And uh, we'll pick up some new fuel filters while we're there too because I've never changed them since I've owned it. It's run fine. No reason to change it. It's always been a lot of residue around this pump. Since I've had it and uh, I can see why because none of these bolts are tight they're all just barely snug so that that'll do it yeah see that should be pushing fuel like crazy and it's not so if you can find the kit you can actually rebuild these by the looks of it it looks like you'll be able to take this apart and just stick a new diaphragm in it What I'm concerning myself with now is when I take this line off of here, it's going to start pouring fuel because of gravity's feeding it. And I don't have any way to shut it off. There's petcocks on the tank, but all they do is equalize compartments in the tank. The piece that runs forward here on this line doesn't have a shut off on it. I'll have to see what I can come up with here in a pinch. <laughs> Here's your, uh, your farmer fix of the day here. There's no way to really plug... On this particular line here, I'm just using this for illustration, I could take this clamp off and just plug the rubber hose with a screwdriver or a, even a stick, you know, and just clamp it down on there just to keep the fuel from coming out for right now. On this one, it's a hard line, and this brass piece doesn't come out of the line, and there's no way to really shut the fuel off to it or plug it. So what I've come up with here is uh, a piece of rubber inner tube from in the truck there. Take that like that take uh, two quarters place it over the hole and then once I got those situated get my pair of vice grips here clamp down like so I think it's gonna work okay got all my pieces handy here and uh, gonna have to try to move pretty quick here because this thing's actually flowing a good bit of fuel I hate to lose it, and it just makes a mess. Here we go. I dropped a brass washer, but I found it. All right. quarters man she's really got some pressure
I think it's working. How about that? There we go. There we go. That's what she looks like in there. And uh, yeah, it's a lobe on the cam runs this thing. A lot of times the diaphragms just get holes in them and that's it. They're just peeking around at it. Uh, what the outlet port there looks clean. Inlet port has got a ton of sludge in it. And I can't tell if I put that in there, working on it, or if that was in there. I'm pretty sure that was in there. I don't know if you guys can see that in there. But there's a bunch of sludge down in the bottom of the passage. So let's clean this thing up and take it apart and see if that diaphragm is bad. I'm 99% sure it is. Also, the reason for cleaning it up is just so that if I take it to the parts store, they have something to identify it by, because there's got to be a manufacturer and a model number on this thing somewhere. You can't see it underneath all the years of gunk. I'm hoping this has been the issue with the hard starting for all these years. You know, it, it just took a while to crank, so I wasn't super concerned with getting it working for as little as I use it. I don't have the time to dedicate to it. But this incentivized it a bit, and hopefully this is it, because this is an easy fix. Ah, made in Germany. It's the good stuff then, huh? There's our model number. So that's an IHC 32115. Kind of goofy where they put that model number i don't know if you guys can see there's a split in the casting there that's where the seam and the mold would have been and you know it, it looks like there should have been a digit there but i don't know if they intentionally left that out knowing that the casting line would be there or what so hopefully we're not missing a digit so i just punched in some numbers on the old pocket computer here and i come up with uh only one or two matches to this pump and we're looking at like $55 via the internet and it's going to take a week or two to get here so we'll go down to the parts store and see what they got for us in stock if they have anything and a lot of times if they don't they can get it next day for no extra charge what are the bugs like where you guys live because we didn't have a cold winter it was just a wet nasty winter and uh, I guess that didn't kill off the bugs in the wintertime like it's supposed to. And the bugs this year are just god-awful. Mosquitoes the size of your head. Flies everywhere. Spiders out the yin-yang. Oh, it's just... I haven't even really wanted to wear short sleeves because you just feel them crawling on you all the time. Of course, the flip side of that is you wear long sleeves and they get trapped in your shirt. Come off of there. All the screws are out. Well, I don't see any obvious holes right away, but I can see it's deformed a little bit over here. They're kicking the pants with these diaphragm diaphragms like this is that a lot of times they don't actually need to have holes in them to quit working a lot of times they'll just stretch to the point where they don't pump like they should Ooh, yeah look at that there's a filter inside of this thing and it's clogged up pretty bad wow I had no idea that was a filter. That could be some of our issue. Can you see how much gunk is in this thing? So that's a brass screen. That's easily cleanable. That's good. And we'll get all this nastiness out of there. Could be a lot of our issue.
Oh, goodness. Look at that. That whole big clump just flopped out of there. All of that. Good gravy. No wonder this thing had troubles running. Definitely getting some fuel filters now. Oh, yeah, you can see there's passages that run around the outside of this thing. And they are just clogged full of stuff. I don't have a whole lot of brake clean left out here. This venture might have to go to the shop. For a good and proper cleaning. Yeah, looking at all this, I'm going to venture to say that this pump probably is fine and it's just clogged up. Alrighty. Just got back from town, got some new fuel filters here, and I took the lift pump back to the house and used the air compressor and really blew it apart. It didn't blow it apart, rather. I used the compressed air to get in there where I couldn't get with the brake clean and uh, get the rest of the dirt out of it that I could see. So uh, I forgot to film that, but that's all I did is just take the air nozzle and blow it out real good. So as best I can tell, it's clean as a whistle now. And uh, what is it? So this is your intake side from the fuel tank and this is your outlet side to the, uh, to the other filters and stuff and the injector pump. And so this should hold fuel pressure and I can blow on it right now. And I can't hear anything leaking. I can't feel any pressure going through. That's not to say it's not, but, you know, we'll see. Let's put this thing back together and see if it works. And if not, then we order a new one. But it was worth a try at cleaning that out after I found all that garbage in there. Because, see, this check valve, if that was hung open from some of that garbage getting through the filters, then uh, that wouldn't hold any fuel pressure. It wouldn't work. All right, I got it all back together. Let's get it on the tractor and hopefully it makes fuel. There we go. All right, gonna pull my clamp off of here and hurry up and throw the fuel line back on. Oh, it's going to be a mess. No way around it. I don't want to lose my quarters. Here we go. Yeah, see, I'm not so sure that that should happen. I guess it should. Yeah, that, that's not going to be a problem. All right, we got the lift pump all back together. Let's go ahead and crack this bleeder loose. We've got fuel coming out of there. Let's see what happens when I... Yeah, that's a lot more gooder. If I wasn't gonna replace these filters, we would continue following the trap there all the way up Hopefully not to the injectors, but at least to the uh, injector pump. But since I'm replacing these filters, we'll go ahead and drop the filters off and uh, clean them out. Put the new filters in. It wants to come. 
There we go. Just stuck a quarter inch extension in the line. That took me far too long, but I finally got all the O-rings in there correctly, into their little grooves. There we go. That looks good, huh? So I ended up just tearing this thing back off of here uh, because it wasn't going to work the way I did it. I wasn't paying attention when I put the O-rings in here. I had an extra O-ring and I just shoved it down into the housing here around the top of this filter. That's actually the inlets where the fuel comes into the filter and then comes out through the center or vice versa depending on how these filters work. But uh, yeah, without with that O-ring jammed in there, the fuel can't get through it. So it's never going to fill up like that. So be gone with that O-ring and stick it back on here. That O-ring up inside the housing will seal onto the top lip here and we'll be golden. All right, now you can already see we have uh, a little bit of fuel trickling in. And I'll open up this bleeder and it should come flying in there. There we go. You see it filling that up now? Good deal. Now we know we got fuel up to that point and we'll work around to the other side. Hopefully we can get fuel this far up by gravity, but if not, we'll have to prime that, use that lift pump and keep pushing it and hopefully it'll uh, pump fuel over to here. So we are getting fuel into the filter, just taking, taking some more pressure to get it actually up over the top. So we'll go ahead and crank the tractor over and hopefully we start getting fuel spouting out there. So that should prove that our lift pump is good. Push that fuel over here and got her going for us. All right, typically after you bleed the filters out, you have to go to the injection pump and crack a bleeder on there. And once you get the fuel to the injection pump, then you have to go up to the injectors and hold open the injectors uh, and crank it so the injection pump can prime all the way up there. But looking at this setup, the way this has a return line going back to this filter that we just uh, bled, being as that returns off the pump, I'm thinking the pump's already bled. So I guess we're going to go ahead and pull this hood off of here and uh, bleed the injectors. I, I hope we don't have to, but I'm thinking we probably do. I'll just crack one at first, and if I'm not getting fuel to it right away, then that's, uh, that's what we're going to have to do. So actually... Uh, it looks like we could probably crack all these injectors right here without even having to take the hood off. So that's uh, great news. So here's our injector line coming up into this nut. And then uh, this is the injector and this is the return line that runs across all three injectors and back down to that filter. Let's go ahead and try to crack this loose. See if we got fuel up here when we crank it. Well, there's not fuel pouring out of it, so that's not a good sign. There we 
already got fuel on two. I'm going to tighten that up, and the third one looks like it's pretty hard to get to even with the hood off. So uh, I'm going to try and get it to fire on two cylinders and let them two work that one out because it'll actually prime itself if the engine's running. It'll just take a little bit. Okay, moment of truth. She should be ready to fire. I, uh, I went ahead and hooked up the jumper cables because the battery was sounding pretty weak and I wanted to spin over fast enough to catch. Especially since it's likely only going to catch on two cylinders at first here. So uh, we got our throttle wide open. Everything's ready to go. Doesn't seem like we're getting a connection on our jumpers here. Give starter a break, we'll burn it up like that. Man, I don't like doing that to that starter. Two cylinders fired first, and then I don't know if you guys heard it, all of a sudden it kicked in number three after it got the air out of number three. So she's back up and running. Sounds like she's running pretty smooth. I imagine uh, cleaning all that dirt out of that lift pump ought to help it quite a bit. Although it never seemed like it wanted for power before, so I don't know. But uh, I'm happy. Last test I have to do before I end this video and that's make sure this thing will restart now uh, I checked it for leaks I wrote the uh, hours and the and the date on the filters so uh, she seems to be running great Let's go ahead and see if she fires back up and then we know this job is done <laughs> Sure, there's going to be some people down in the comments asking what this uh, apparatus on the back here is 
And I'll just tell you, when this baby hits 88, you're gonna see some serious shit.